Well, you know, I had a doctor told me that was impossible for me to have had dreams or visions because my mind was totally shut off. And I said, it wasn't my mind, it was my spirit that was awake. And that, that's where the difference was. You know, I think I had to go through everything I went through for a reason because there was a, there was a purpose in it. Me getting sick, I think, was one of the, probably the greatest thing that could have happened because God put me in coma and made me watch and made me see how he wanted me to perform from that day on, how he wanted the purpose he had for my life. Welcome to this episode of Heaven Encounters. My guests today, chaplains Manny and Jamie Scudder, went through a horrendous experience during COVID. Chaplain Manny uh, experienced and suffered from COVID in the hospital. He had an amazing encounter, a heavenly encounter that he'll tell us about. So we welcome you to the show today. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Well, we know COVID started uh, and that was the, the most, probably the most severe uh, strain of COVID was during the time that you had it during the initial phase. Uh, and then uh, you had a really bad case, which brought you uh, to the hospital. So give us some background as to uh, how you, you're being a chaplain, what that means, and then how it led up to uh, your contracting uh, COVID. Well, uh, during that time, I was a chaplain at the uh, Merced County Jail Ministries, and uh, I was a chaplain for at that time for the inmates. So um, anyways, I had been there for a little bit over a year. COVID had began. It was probably a few months into COVID, and I became sick. At first, uh, you know, I stayed at home just trying to fight the, fight the COVID on my own, um, but I started getting really sick really quick, and my wife finally talked to me and said, Manny, we need to get you to the hospital. So I went that night about two in the morning. Um, it was a hot summer night, probably 90 degrees even at nighttime. And I was, I had the chills. I mean, I was cold. Uh, they brought me in and believe it or not, back then, the people who brought me in looked like they're from outer space. They had all the equipment on them. They brought me into an isolation room. And uh, I, I remember very little in that room, but I remember two things. Uh, I remember talking to my wife and I remember talking to my pastor. And I had talked to my pastor. I knew I was I was really sick. And I says, Pastor, I don't know if I'm going make to make it through this. And he mm -hmm. says, Manny, you're going to make it. You're going to live and you're not going to die. You're going to make it. And I said, well, just in case, please tell my wife I love her and keep, make sure they, they're taken care of. Well, then I remember talking to my doctor and uh, just before he put me on the ventilator and I looked at him, I said, you know what, doctor? He says, I'm going to live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. And he looked at me and says, in that case, I'm going to do everything I can to keep you alive. So that's where it all began. And at that point, they put me on the ventilator. They, they put me in coma, induced coma on me and paralyzed my whole body so that the uh, ventilator could work and not my lungs trying to work for them. That is, that's a case where at that point you, life or death is, uh, is uh, the situation you're in, but uh, you are in, at the point now where you are at the, you are at the cusp of, uh, of dying. So how, how did, how did that happen that you entered into this space uh, of what we would call a heavenly encounter? Well, you know, I remember I was starting to fade out and uh, beginning not to be totally alert, but I could hear people in the background. I could hear the nurses speaking. I heard one nurse saying, wow, he's in really bad shape. Um, and after that, I kind of faded totally out. And when I finally came back, um, I was in another realm. And when I say I finally came back, I came back in the spiritual. I wasn't in no way in my mind. And I came back in another realm and what I saw was very vivid. I saw vivid colors. Um, I was out in a desert and uh, 
when I was out there in the desert, I could see, I could see some buildings. I could see some uh, jets, uh, different things of that nature. And I was in a plane and this plane was a medical plane and I was in a bed in the plane and there's a large window in front of me. And, um, it was kind of, I mean, I was like, what in the world is going on here? And, and I, I looked up and I saw this eagle, it was a golden eagle and it was flying. You could see the wings. And as, as it flew by underneath the wings, it was just like pure gold. And it was so bright. It was hard to look at. And he just kept flying by me in, in, in circles. And then all of a sudden I saw another bird that looked like a golden eagle, had the golden wings, but the wings were made of pyrite. And I knew this. And it was flying by me. Well, the golden eagle saw this, swooped down and killed uh, the other bird, which was nothing but a vulture. Um, and I was like, wow, God, what are you trying to show me here? At that point, um, I saw people lining up by the plane to come in. And as they were lining up, I noticed that each one of these people had were wearing their sin. I saw one man, he was standing there, he had an army jacket on, and his body was made up like a TV screen or a computer screen. And in this screen, you could see his sin, and he had a, the sin for lust. And I was thinking, why are you showing me this, God? And then the next person had, you know, they, they, their body contributed to their sin. And then there was a lady that she, she was actually um, in the body of a wolf and she turned into a lady. And um, I started seeing all this. I'm saying, God, what are you trying to show me? And God said to me, these are the people I call, I called you to witness to, and you didn't witness to them. Uh -huh. And uh, I was really shaken up by that. And the next vision came and I was in a Jeep. And in this Jeep, Jesus was sitting next to me driving the vehicle, and we were driving down this dirt road. And on both sides of me were tar pits. And inside these tar pits were men, and they were drowning in the tar pits. And I said, what is going on yeah. here, God? And he says, Manny, these are the men I called for you to witness to me. You didn't witness to them. And what I didn't know, these were homosexual men. And um, one of the reasons I hadn't witness to these men throughout my life was because when I was younger at age 16, I had been raped by gunpoint by a homosexual and I hated them with a passion. So throughout my time as a minister, I've always avoided ministering to those people. Mm. And I believe God was showing me, Hey man, you need to get over that and you need to begin to witness to the people I've called you to witness to. And the crazy story is right after that happened, I was in a, uh, a protected custody dorm, which was filled with uh, rapists, um, molesters, and every type of inmate. And I went in there and I spoke the gospel of Jesus Christ and every man accepted Christ that day. Wow. And so I knew from that day out, I said, wow, now I see, I see what you're saying. Wow. Do you think that <laughs> this, what you were seeing then, and God was showing you what you had not done, that you were in a space of uh, what we would, the afterlife, second heaven. Where do you think you were in the space of, of that? I, I believe I was in the waiting place before the judgment. Uh -huh. And I was seeing people um, who were waiting for judgment day. But the sad part was these people were still in their sins even then. Uh -huh. um, there was a point that I was at another place that was like a prison. And I was on the second floor, the second tier, and I could look down and I could see the cell block and I could see the people inside each one of their, their, uh, uh, their cells. And each person, even though they knew what was going on, were still living in their sin inside their cells. I said, and I looked at Jesus, what is going on here? He says, Manny, I called you to witness to these people and you didn't. And he just okay. kept telling me that. And I'm thinking, wow, what have I done wrong in my ministry? Because I love to minister. I love to tell people about Jesus on the streets. So, you know, I'm thinking, God, what have I done wrong? And he said, Manny, you picked the people you, you have chosen to minister, and you haven't listened to me what your purpose really is. Well, both of your uh, ministries as chaplains is okay. a very noble calling of the Lord. So... You know, Paul obviously talked about being in the third heaven, 
Second, that means there's second, the first heaven, the uh, what we consider to be the heavens, galaxies, what have you. But th- mm-hmm. there's a space in which you are now, uh, you know, fighting for your life. Maybe you uh, don't know what happened during that course of time physiologically. But Jamie, what about you? You were outside and and what did the doctors tell you? What was Manny's prognosis? At that time, <clears throat> the doctors were telling me that there was not much hope. They didn't give me much to hang on to at all. Um, they had told me that his organs were beginning to fail. And they said, I think, I believe they said when five organs are failing, that it's close to them having to pull the plug per se. And at that time, his lungs were failing, his kidney, his liver were being affected and starting to fail. And and he was in congestive heart failure. So we were already on four organs being affected. So they had told us that there was a slim chance of recovery. Um, they, he also had a septic infection on top of all of that. Mm. And so there really wasn't much hope at all. And when you're in a place like that, where the doctors are not giving you much hope, you can't be there with your loved one, which in normal circumstances, we'd be there night and day surrounding our loved one. We had to hold on to our faith and our prayers and trust that the Lord was going to hear us in that time. Did So did you think Manny would die or do you, did you have a confidence that the Holy Spirit speak to you anything but as as this is going on i'm assuming manny that during this time you don't really have the the cogency really to 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 know you're in the spirit at this point i mean you are exactly. our spirit man at this point yeah, so man. how did how did uh jamie what the confidence how was the spirit uh, holy spirit speaking to you during this at that time my daughters and i asked the lord are you going to take him, you know, are you really going to take him from us right now? Is this how it's going to go out? And we just had an overwhelming sense that his work was not finished yet. So we held on to that. The Lord gave me a scripture out of Jeremiah thirty-two seventeen. that says, All Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. And that's the beginning of the scriptures that we have held on to in that time that we just pray that nothing is too hard for you, Lord. So we know that you can bring healing. We we know that you can bring him back to us, that we can have all of our promises fulfilled, the prophecies that you have spoken over our family. So we're going to hold firm on to your word. Amen to that. So Manny, it seems yeah. like now the Lord has taken you when you were in this state uh, and he'd taken you to a lesson that you would bring back, uh, for yourself yes. and, and others as well. Uh, how was, how is the, the Lord speaking to you in these different scenarios that he was revealing to you of the shortcomings as it relates to your ministry today? You, you had mentioned that, uh, because, uh, right. because you were attacked, uh, raped, uh, by somebody who is a, um, a homosexual that 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 you, that you didn't want to be around those people for that reason mm-hmm. but did he not bring you to that ministry then uh subsequently and and uh and now you're you're kind of immersed in that ministry so it, it obviously changed you yeah it, it changed me a whole lot um um i'm not totally into that ministry but i'm i'm open to speak to them now where where before i wasn't um i i i have an easy time at it now um i can't wait to witness to one when i when i get the chance um there was one part i i didn't tell you it was a uh, one of the uh visions i had which really showed the big picture was i was in a bubble at one time and uh when i was in this bubble Satan was there and he was disguised as a goat and with the big old kind of like I have right here, goatee. And he had a pipe in his hand and next to him was a demon, which looked like a dog without skin or without hair and just without skin. It was just to the bear. 
And by the the window part of this dome, I had a backpack that had only two items in it. And it had water in it, and it had the word of God in it. And this demon dog was trying his best to get through the window to attack what I had in the bag. But uh, what I had in the bag, I carried with me everywhere. In all my in all my uh, visions, I always had that bag with me. And I believe that bag re resembled the spirit of God and the word of God and his word. And I mm -hmm. kept it with me at all times. But then Satan looked at me and he says, he says, Manny, why don't you just curse God and die? And I uh. said, well, I've heard that before. He <laughs> literally wanted me to lose my faith in God and say, okay, it's over with and just die, you know? And I said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stick it out. And the last vision I had, which I'll, I'll tell you, um, I was in a, uh, a, a gurney and they were taking me outside to leave the hospital. I was being released. And while in this gurney, I looked out and I saw uh, a whole lot of people standing everywhere. I, maybe a hundred or two. And they're all standing around waiting for me to come out. And there was news reporters there too. And anyways, as I went out, I saw them. I, I looked at them and I says, everybody get to your knees. And when, when we all went to our knees, I said, I, I looked at them and says, Oh, death, where is your sting? And just gave God the praise. Uh, and the crazy thing was everyone was on their knees and that's when I knew that I was going to be all right. Uh, it sounds almost prophetic in a way what the Lord was, mm -hmm. was telling you through these various uh, vignettes or visions that were happening. Mm -hmm. This demon that you saw, Manny, he was uh, somebody that that looked many accounts that we've heard of 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 uh mm -hmm. the demons satan um why why was the lord do do you know revealing this to you for what purpose to show the spiritual warfare that was going on you or know some other i almost think i i think that the devil really uh really asked god hey let me have a chance at it let me see what i can do oh and god says Go ahead. I know my servant. I know he, I know what his answer is going to be. And I, I truly believe with the water and the word there with me. And when he said that, I knew that I would not lose my faith in God, but that I would go through and and survive what was going on. I, you know, I, I really had that faith that God, God was there with me and was going to show me completely through it. So you're kind of like a Job figure then. You know, that that's what happened with Job, wasn't it? When uh yeah. when Satan appeared before God and and uh and God and and Satan said basically the same thing that he claimed Satan claimed that uh, Job would would deny God if he were to go through mm -hmm. suffering. And God knew his heart and allowed him to go through that. But um that that seemed to be the case with you that that uh, he was, he was, he he was allowing you to go through this, but he was also by your side, saving you through it. So, at what point did you begin to feel that you were coming out of this point of uh, of near death to uh, to something else? Um, when I had woken up, you know, the first time I had woke up, my my wife could explain it to you better, but she was. Um, she had her phone in her hand and the nurse had a phone on me and my wife was playing Christian music through, through the phone to me. And I woke up out of, out of coma at that point. And she knows better of what happened at that point. Well, Jamie, let's go to you then. And what, what happened? <laughs> so during the whole time that he was in a coma, we had FaceTime that we would do in the morning and in the afternoon. And we we would play worship music or, for instance, that day we took our service that we had from church. And after church, we went, we played it, the worship service that was playing that day. And as we were doing worship, he began to open his eyes. So we had already known that they were decreasing the sedation 
And it was just the first time that he had opened his eyes. So it was really um, emotional to say the least, to see him coming awake and coming back to us. But we felt like the whole time we just wanted to play things that would speak to his spirit. Because we know even though the natural man may not be responding, the spirit man is always well. There's nothing wrong with the spirit. <clears throat> There's no illness in the spiritual there's no sadness in the spiritual. And so we were just speaking directly to his spirit, trusting that God was going to connect with him and that he would be okay. That's an important lesson, isn't it? To, uh, yeah. When we have uh, a loved one who is comatose, uh, catatonic, at the point of, uh, of uh, death, that we can speak even though n not to the physical uh, self, the person, we can, uh, we can pray and we're speaking into the spirit of that person and that's what you were doing. That's, that is a spirit-led prayer and uh, mm -hmm. we're talking to the spirit man then uh, as opposed to the physical, of course. So back to you, Manny, on the, the experience itself and the effect of it. How were you transformed... Yeah post um, now coming out of that coma to now being uh, having had this experience? Well, when I came out of coma, I realized that my body didn't work. I had no use of my arms, no use of my legs. The only thing I could turn was was my neck. Mm. And that's the only the only I mean, part of my body that I had use of. Um, I had no idea how bad it was at that point but I knew I couldn't lift my arms up. Um, the more days that I was in the hospital and they finally put me into a rehabilitation hospital, um, I started to realize that, you know, hey, I can't lift my legs. I can't, I can't bend my toes. Um, I, can, I started to get some use of my arms, not much. Um, they put a weight in my hand and told me to lift it. It was a one pound weight. I couldn't lift a one pound weight. Mm. Uh, so it was took time. And at first I was wondering, wow, am I ever going to recover from this? Is this something that I'm going to, you know, have for the rest of my, my life. And, um, the, uh, for a while there, you know, uh, the doctors didn't even think I'd ever walk again because I'd lost all the use of my legs mm. and I was in a wheelchair even after leaving. And it was probably about six months into it after being, being, uh, out of the hospital that I was at a, uh, a service, uh, Sunday morning service. And it was after church and we, they, uh, we were still playing music and the pastor was still there ministering. And he asked my wife to wheel me to the, to the, uh, front of the, uh, uh, stage. And so she did. And he asked the ushers to stand me up and he looked at me and he said, the verse money or gold have I none, but this I give unto you, you know, rise up and walk. Well, he, just said it, but didn't think that that's what I was going to do. And I took one step and kept going and kept going. And I was almost at a run running pace. The ushers, you can see it on the video. were trying to keep up with me. And <laughs> so, so that were day, you, you seemed healed at that point. I mean, you had suffered from I sepsis. Was. That's a, your body yeah. was poisoned beyond the COVID itself. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have been able to walk. Yeah. No, the doc, my, my neurosurgeon had, had told me that uh, he did not think I'd ever walk again. And for me to stand up and do that was a miracle on its own. And when the doctor started seeing me walking, when I went back to the doctor's office, they were in amazement. Said, what happened to you? And I looked at him and says, God happened. Uh -huh. you know. And I actually got to pray with some doctors um, who were Hindu, a, a, a Hindu doctor, my lady doctor. And, and I prayed with her and she looked at me with tears coming out of her eyes and says, I was, I'm here to service you, but yet you serviced me. And that's the power of God through his healing power. And, and that's the one thing I want people to know that God is still a healing God. Yeah. The, actually the day before that happened, Manny went to a men's retreat and he was in the wheelchair, as he said, the men were having to literally pick him up and put him in the truck. Mm. That he couldn't even stand and like he didn't have the strength in himself to even pull himself up into a truck. And so, I mean, the power of God is so amazing. It is. 
Yeah, the power of God and also um, the things we don't quite understand, for example, the eagle, but you understood it, what God was conveying yes. through these visions mm-hmm. of these of these beings, you know, Ezekiel, Revelation, Daniel, you know, there's some uh, kind of bizarre things, and that's what you were seeing. Uh, the, yes. the, the the things, the tank, the, the all of those different visions. That's not something that you could really imagine, is it? That's not that's yeah. not like a dream. Well, you know, I had a doctor told me that was impossible for me to have had dreams or visions because my mind was totally shut up or shut off. And I said it wasn't my mind; it was my spirit that was awake. You know, yes. and that that's where the difference was. I also believe that the Lord is going to speak to his people in a way that they would understand. So the way he would speak to you may be different than how he's going to speak to me in visions. It's going to be something that is between me and the Lord or between Manny and the Lord. That is going to be something that we understand. God knows how to speak to his people individually. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, Jamie. And it kind of begs the question also uh, as to why these particular visions. Is there any correlation you've been able to post the experience, come up with as to why these particular visions of what you saw related to how God shows or, or those particular or specific to you? I think he was he was drawing me into the, the purpose he had for me. You know, yeah. uh, since I was a young man or a young boy, um, Oral Roberts had me in his arms. When I was at that time crippled too, I had woke up. Uh, I had uh, something happen to me and I was unable to walk. And we were at a tent meeting, Oral Roberts tent meeting back in 1965. And he put me in his arms and uh, uh, prophesied over me and said that one day I would be an evangelist. And uh, then he set me out or put me back on the ground and I began to walk. So I knew from a young age, because my parents had always said, yeah, you're, you're supposed to be evangelist. You're supposed to be this, that one day that I was going to walk in those shoes. Um, throughout my life, things got crazy. I, you know, I, I went from being a, a Christian boy, Christian kid to uh, going around and doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing. You know, uh, you know, getting, getting, uh, drunk or smoking pot and doing different things like that. Um, I went back to the world, but God had always been there next to me. The Holy spirit always warned me. In, in fact, it made it hard for me sometimes to party because I could always hear the Holy spirit saying, what are you doing here? Mm. Why are you here? You know? And, uh, throughout my life, I knew that. And when I was about 42 years old, I finally gave up to the Holy spirit. And began to straighten out my life and began to, to uh, start ministering. You know, I've always been a Christian, but I but I wasn't walking walking the walk that God had me to walk. So in the last twenty years, God has been been um, I guess you can say uh, aligning my ministry and and preparing me for what He has for today. Mm. You know, I think I had to go through everything I went through for a reason because there's a, there was a purpose in it. Um, me getting sick, I think was one of the, probably the greatest thing that could have happened because God put me in coma and made me watch and made me see how he wanted me to p- perform from that day on, you know, mm. how he wanted the purpose he had for my life. That's great. And, you know, how, how did you get, become pa- or chaplains in the prisons? I mean, how did that happen? Well, that it, it changed over. What happened is I'm no longer a, a chaplain in uh, the county jail. Uh, my wife and I are now chaplains in the state of California. Uh, it's the California Chaplains Corps, and we go all around California to the prisons, uh, the state prisons, and we're there for the officers now. So uh. we're we're their chaplains. Uh, we're not the chaplains for the inmates. We're we're there for the officers, the nurses, uh-huh. for those who are. Um, who are sworn officers and the non-sworn. Ah. And it's it's a beautiful thing. We get to do that together. And we've been doing that and going from prison to prison and uh, just being there for the officers. That's wonderful. Well, we pray blessings yeah. over you during the course yes. of your uh, ministering uh, to, to those uh, 
who are in the, that system. Um, have you shared that with uh, with either the those who are in the prison uh, employment or those who are inmates? Uh, have you shared your story and how did they respond yes. to that? Because it's pretty it's pretty bizarre on the surface. We as believers in Christ, you know, we we know that there are some things that are beyond even our comprehension. Uh, but how how do they respond to that? Um, big time. Um, in the last few years since I, uh, since COVID's been, you know, I came out of COVID and I went back into the, to the jails and that I had over uh, probably close to a thousand men either accept Christ or, 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 um, turn their life back to Christ through my testimony. And, uh, and I've been able to share even outside of the, out of the facilities, um, on the streets, in the, in the malls, wherever. And I tell people of my story and it really affects people like, like, wow, you know, it, I'm not supposed to be here. 90% chance I was supposed to die before I got off the ventilator. And even after the ventilator, the doctor said, well, there's still a 60% chance you're not going to make it because of all the problems I had afterwards. I had congestive heart failure when I got out, um, my leg problem, just all these different kidney problems. And, you know, uh, the doctors really didn't think that I was completely healed from these things, but God, one at a time, started healing me. Um, my congestion heart uh, problem, I no longer have. My lungs are completely um, healed. You know, I, one of my lungs had collapsed while I was in coma. Mm -hmm. um, and now that those lungs are both working. So, you know, God's been healing me throughout the last few years that I've been, been um, um, uh, free of COVID. And uh, I believe that he's just going to keep healing me. Well, praise the Lord for that. And, you know, that's a miracle. It just doesn't, I mean, there is healing, obviously, from COVID, and many have been healed that's from right. it. But the extent with which you suffered was not only COVID, but, again, your, your body became toxic uh, to itself. So, yes. uh, you know, another, another lesson from that is that these experiences, these ha having encounters... Uh, these have an evangelical effect uh, that is yes. absolutely tremendous. Uh, so it's not just getting our jollies. It's, it's showing the, uh, the glory of God uh, and the promise of thank heaven. You. So we thank you so much, uh, Jamie and Manny. We thank you for uh, being uh, chaplains for your ministry and for sharing your story today. And we have some uh, great... Uh, including news, and that is if you are in Christ Jesus, know him as your Lord and Savior, be of good cheer, because heaven is in your future. Until next time, take care, and God bless. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like further information, go to our website at randyk.org, where our mission is simple, to share the great news of God's love.